We have now arrived at fixture calibration. I hope you are as excited as I am to get some XYZ data in for our fixtures. There are two different ways to align our fixtures. They are automatic centering and manual centering. Before we start either alignment method, we need the pucks placed on stage again. This time we're going to take advantage of the light sensor built into them. One of the neat things about using the pucks is that they don't require full darkness. There can be ambient light, such as house lights, when doing this process. The sensors are simply measuring the change in brightness as the fixture points at it. This is great if there are other people in the room also trying to set up for the show, or if the show is at an outdoor venue. Make sure the pucks are powered on and flashing either blue or green. They can be placed in a similar arrangement to how they were for the initial calibration, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same. The idea with the pucks for this calibration is to find four distinct pan and tilt values for each fixture. Both the pan and tilt should vary for each point. Tilt cannot cross center when moving between any of the points. This means when you tilt a fixture to one side, the tilt must stay to that side for all four points. The position also shouldn't be too steep. If the pucks are too close to the fixtures, then the change between values across points is so small it has a hard time figuring out the calibration. Also, not all fixtures have to be calibrated at the same time. It's okay to fully calibrate some fixtures with one puck placement, and then when calibrating other fixtures, move the pucks to a different placement that works better for them. With all this in mind, let's place the pucks on stage. I have the black downstage right, red downstage left, green upstage right, and the blue upstage left. But this time, instead of having them as far off stage as they were for our anchor calibration, I've moved them in and staggered them a little bit. This allows me to have the varying pan and tilt values we just mentioned. Now we come to the first alignment method, automatic alignment. The advantage of this method is you don't have to spend much time dialing in position presets because ZackTrack finds the center of the beam automatically. The disadvantage is no one can walk in front of the beams when alignment is happening, and it takes approximately one minute per fixture to align. If we're using 20 fixtures with ZackTrack, that isn't so bad, but if we're using 60, it might take too long. Either way, it's a fun process to watch. To start the process, we need to be in the Fixture tab of the Show Editor. At the top of the list is a button that says Alignment Wizard. Press this. The first portion of the alignment is selecting which fixtures we want to align. We are going to go through the automatic alignment method twice with the Urus, once using ZackTrack for pan tilt values, and once with the console. Select only Fixture 101 for this first alignment process. Leave the rest unchecked. Press Next when complete. This new window gives a couple options to choose from. The first option asks, do we want to use the lighting console instead of the tablet controls to roughly center the fixture light beams on the light sensors? In other words, are we going to use the tablet or the console to get the fixtures pointed at the pucks? For this first pass, we're going to leave it set to no, meaning we will use the tablet for centering. However, we are going to toggle into advanced mode because there is one more setting we want to check. At the bottom of the advanced menu, there is a setting that says force tracker heights to zero. No floor is perfectly flat, which means all the pucks are going to have tiny degrees of differences in their Z height. Evening them all to zero will give us a more accurate calibration. Once this is done, press next. Now we manually pan and tilt the fixture to each puck, starting with the black one. First, set the dimmer to full. I also adjust focus to a harder edge, which helps the light sensor on the puck detect when it has reached the edge of the beam. We can see at the bottom of the window the fixture alignment wizard pulled tracker information in from the black puck under track position. We can use the arrows on the left to pan and tilt the fixture in place. Keep in mind, again, once we have decided on a tilt direction, this needs to stay consistent for all four pucks. On the bottom left of the pan tilt square is a lux reading. Before the fixture is on the puck, it will say anywhere between 0 and 4 lux, depending on how bright the room is. Once the light has hit the puck, that number will jump up. This means the puck sees the light and we can move on to the next light. Press next and now we need to follow the same process for the red puck. Once the light is on that puck, press next again and do the green puck.
Lastly, pan and tilt to the blue puck. Lights do not need to be perfectly centered on the pucks because Zach Track will automatically center it. We simply need to rough it in. Once this is all complete, press next to start the automatic refinement process. Now just sit back and watch Zach Track do its magic. It will go through each puck, moving the beams left, right, up, and down, one at a time, till the light sensor finds the edge of the beam. Therefore, having a nice hard edge helps this process. For wash fixtures, just do the best you can. It will jump from puck to puck, doing the same centering process for each of them. Keep an eye on the tablet during this process. It will let us know if it is centering normally or finding errors along the way. Keep in mind not to walk in front of the beams while this is happening, because ZackTrack needs to have a clear line of sight between the light and the sensor. When it is finished, we will hear the familiar ding and it will say, Fixture Alignment Finished. If we received a good calibration, we will see a green check mark. A yellow check mark means it was a decent calibration, and a red X means it was bad. From here, press Finish. Great, now we see green XYZ numbers for Fixture 101. Let's try a slightly different method for calibrating Fixture 102. Press next. This time instead, we want to set Use Console for Centering to Yes. We will leave all the advanced mode settings as they are, still zeroing out the Z. Press next, and now we see a slightly different window than before. This time, instead of having the option to pan and tilt the fixture from Zach Track, we have a screen that just says black, with the Lux and Tracker readings below it. For this method, Zach Track is waiting for pan tilt values from the console. We can go over to our console and focus the light on the puck with our encoders. We will also need to put the light at full from the console and adjust the zoom and focus, just like we did for the previous light, but with the console this time. Once the light is over the black puck, we can see the Lux numbers jump up, and so press next to go to the red puck. Rinse and repeat for this one, then the green and blue pucks. Now press next and watch the refinement process. This should take about 15 seconds per puck. Soon we will hear the familiar ding once again. Did we get the green check mark again? Awesome. Now our front light is complete. We will use the second alignment method for our Mistrals. The advantage of this method is that the alignment process is much faster. People can also be on stage while this is happening and don't have to worry about crossing in front of the beam and interfering with Zach track. The disadvantage of this method is we need super precise position presets. In other words, with this method we are manually centering the beam on the puck, and then Zach Track just has to calculate positions from there. It takes longer to make the positions, but the alignment is lightning fast. Let's take a look. Before we get into Zach Track, we need to make some position presets on the console. I like to get the zoom, iris, and focus as tight and sharp as possible for these. It helps to find the center of the beam. I can't stress enough how important it is to find the exact center of the beam on the puck when making these. It will make or break the fixture alignment. Here are how my four position presets look for the pucks. After this is done, we jump back into the Zach Track Alignment Wizard. Make sure fixtures 101 and 102 are now unchecked and fixtures 201 through 204 are checked. Then press Next. We will leave Use Console for Centering set to Yes so we can use the position presets we just made. At the bottom of advanced mode, we also need to turn off automatic alignment. Then we can press next. On black, we will select the fixtures in the console and send them to the black position preset. Then press next. Rinse and repeat for red, green, and blue. After giving all four pucks the position data, press next again. 
ZackTrack will quickly do the calibration based on the position data we sent to it. Within a matter of seconds, all four fixtures will be calculated. Bam! It was that fast. Now that all our fixtures have alignment data, it's time to watch them follow our tracker.